Hello folks, um, you're very welcome to another live stream here on my YouTube channel. It's great to see you here. Um, if you have any questions on driving, on the test, on learning to drive, let me know in the comments section and I'll try my best to get through all the comments and all the questions by the end of this stream. My name is Dane Tai, uh, otherwise known as the Great Dane. As the old saying goes, get in lane with the Great Dane. I'm a driving instructor in Wexford, um, not full time anymore, but I do the odd few lessons. I have uh, my main focus is on YouTube these days. I make driving lesson videos and I'm here to answer your questions on the driving test, learning to drive or any driving related question you have. My email is on screen there. It's in the yellow uh, writing there, just, just in the lower middle. So if you have any questions on driving, any questions about the test, if, you're, if you failed your test and you're not sure where you went wrong or the tester didn't give you detailed feedback, my email is there in the yellow, danetai at gmail.com. Email me, I'll try to get back to you the same day or the next day and I'll give you some advice and some tips and I'll link into some of my um, videos that will help you um, to be a better driver and to learn from your mistakes basically. So I have a few quick um pieces of information to let you know, some of which you might already know. Um, a lot of people in the comments are asking about um, an urgent driving test if, if you have to, if you're an essential worker and you want to get your test quicker. So if you log on to rsa.ie, you will be able to follow the link there to apply for your test. Now you'll, also, you'll, you'll actually have to go to www.myroadsafety.ie nowadays to apply for a test and i'll get it i'll get into that um my road safety.ie website um in a couple of minutes but once you log in there you will have the option of filling out an online form it should it should be it should come up pretty quick and just fill out that online form with your your uh, driver number and they might ask you for your pps number and you have to say that you're an essential worker and they'll uh, you, you submit that form then and they'll hopefully give you a, a, a quicker test date. So that's the, the story there. The online form, um, you have to declare that you're an essential worker or an urgent worker. You have to have your driver number and an email and a phone number as well. Um, submit that and hopefully you'll get a quicker test date. So the my road safety www.myroadsafety.ie there in the green on the bottom there. So that's where you will apply for your driving test uh, nowadays on that website. It's um it's a kind of an online portal uh, created by the RSA to try and I suppose streamline and improve the learner driver experience. So you can set your goals and and you know make a note of your achievements and all that wholesome stuff you know. Uh, but as well as that, you will be able to um, get advice and tips. You'll be able to book your driving test and a theory test, I believe. You will be able to reschedule your test and hopefully pick a date, which is probably the best thing about this myroadsafety.ie thing. You'll be able to hopefully pick your date and choose a date that suits you. So that'll be great if, if, if and when that gets up and running. I'm not really sure how it's getting on because you might be surprised to learn this, but the RSA don't tell me anything. They don't. I, as I can't speak for all driving instructors, but uh, I find I most of the time I find out about this uh, very worthwhile uh, myroadsafety.ie website portal, which is, which seems a great a great idea and it has good intentions. But I'm probably more likely to find out about that in the general media or by accident online, or I might get an email from the RSA. So. Uh, they don't. They don't give us any special treatment. They. They just. You know, we're practically ignored. So I. I only really found out about this my road safety that I think very very recently. That might come as a surprise to you, but that's the way the RSA operate. It doesn't come as a surprise to me anyway. I can guarantee you that. Um. So it seems like a good idea. It seems like a good site. Um. You can also let the driving test authorities, the RSA, know if you have any special requirements, if you have any special needs for your driving tests. Maybe you need an interpreter, things like that. And you will also be able to find out if you have any disqualifications on your license as well, whether you're a learner permit or or full license holder. So that's the way. That's that's where you apply for your test now. Myroadsafety.ie. If you go to the RSA website, you'll be diverted there, and uh, it looks like a good uh, a good portal. It looks like it's a uh, good idea and we'll see how it goes um so that's that 
Uh, let's see what else have we got there. Um, so let's I, I just just moving on what what I have on screen there. Okay, so I have a checklist up there. I'm going to go through this checklist now of all the things. No, I when I say all the things, I mean all the main things you should be aware of and be prepared for with your driving test. Okay, so I'm going to go through that now very soon. I have some signs down there as well. They're all orange signs, road work signs. So let me know in the comment section if you want to have an attempt at. Uh, letting me know what those signs mean. Um, my email is there in the yellow, daintai.gmail.com. Any questions, report sheets, send it to me. rsa.ie, that's for the road safety authority. myroadsafety.ie in the green there, that's where you apply for your test. And over on the right there above, the, above me, we have a driving test report sheet, which I'm going to go through in a couple of minutes. So as I said, any question, loads of comments there coming in. Um, so I'm gonna get get through a few comments there now first, and then I'm gonna come back and go through the checklist in detail. So let's let's get started with maybe three or four comments, and then I'll come back to the to the checklist. I've just got a donation there of twenty five euro. I'm not sure who it's from, but I want to say whoever it is from, uh, I am very very grateful, and I really really appreciate that. Uh, so thank you for the support, whoever that is there. I'll get down to you in a minute, whoever it is, but really appreciate any support, whether it's. In super chat or by uh, by paypal so a couple of comments um what's the first one here Aoife mullen hi then do you know what the biggest reason people fail is no Aoife, i don't because everybody's different you see um you know it's there's not one particular reason why people fail because some people have weaknesses on observation other people have weaknesses on progress you know like if i was to pick a few i, I i'd see a lot on i'd see a lot on progress like that's basically people driving too slow. I tell you, I tell you where I see a lot on progress, and uh, I, I mean, I, I, I don't mean to be politically. Um, what am I even trying to say? What I'm trying to say is, uh, foreigners, people like from India and Pakistan, people like that, I, I find generally speaking, but without putting them into the one bracket, they tend to be, uh, a little bit too slow sometimes. Now. I'm only kind of surmising that from the report sheets I get and from the emails I receive. But I seem to get an, an awful lot of people that wouldn't be originally from Ireland, that might be from kind of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and uh, kind of um, Asia, Southeast Asia, and that kind of area. And they seem to be under the impression... Now, I, I'm not trying to categorise them all on, on, in the one category, but they seem to be under the, under the impression that if you drive really, really, really slow and you know basically hold up traffic and annoy the shite out of cars behind you well surely i'll pass my test then well i've got news for you no that's not the way it works if you drive too slow you're probably you are you are going to fail the test so i see i think progress is a big one observation is another one uh not getting enough looks in uh position i find comes up a lot as well a lot of stuff on position position turning left not keeping left maybe straddling the lines and definitely as well, if the reverse around the corner, uh, I, I whether it's people emailing me sheets or my own clients, like it's it's the reverse. It's either people going a little too wide, a little too close. More often than not, it's observation on the reverse around the corner. That that that's a that's a real killer for people. So the biggest reason for failure, it it's there's some of them, but everybody's different. You know, it it just depends on the depends on the person, and it can depend on the route as well. Claude Plunkett, morning day and I passed my test on Monday. Great stuff. Thank you so much for making these videos and li and lives lives streams, I mean, available. Thank you for all your help. You're very welcome, Claude, and congratulations. It's always great when you pass your test. It's one of those life achievements, and well done to you. Um Tom Tom Krishiak, I think there. You are a legend there. Well, thank you very much. People call me the great day, you know, but uh, passed first time last Saturday with two marks for speeding, okay, which I guess couldn't have been helped. Well, you know, hopefully, hopefully in the future you won't you won't be uh, Colin McRae, do your Colin McRae impressions. But Tom, that is great news. Thank you very much for your kind donation. I really appreciate it. Same goes for anybody making any, any donations by PayPal or here in YouTube. Congratulations, Tom, and thank you very much for your kind words, sir. So, um... Just another comment then before I get to the checklist. Um, hi, Dan. Thanks for going live again. It's much free. You're very welcome, Dennis. Uh, Dennis Sherry, that is. Very welcome, Dennis. Any questions, let me know. And um, I'm, I'm glad to be here and to be interacting with you. As I said, any questions, comment section is there. So the checklist here. Let's go through the checklist then, okay? 
you need to make sure that you have these things in order for your for your driving test. You have to make sure your car is in order, your paperwork is in order, because I'm not sure how many people, I'm not sure about the figures now, but, but a significant amount of people end up failing the test before they even start the keys because they haven't, their car isn't right, or the documents isn't right, or they're learning permanent out of date, these type of things. So let's start with my first, first thing there. Tax insurance, NCT. You have to make sure your car is taxed. Check the tax disc. Make sure that it's in date. Um, if, 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 you're, if you're doing the driving test the month of, uh, and the tax is out of date the same month, then it's it the taxes is, is is in date until the end of the month. So for example, we're in the month of December now. So if your tax disc is the twelfth twenty, it's okay till the end of December. So check the date, make sure the registration car registrations match as well, and uh, don't be caught out without any tax. The same with insurance. Make sure the car registration on your car matches the car registration on the insurance disc. Your insurance disc should have a green little line on the side, usually on the on the left, usually on the left side as you look at it. Um, this green line is important. This this validates it, ma makes it legal. So make sure your insurance disc is in date. Make sure that you have a, a valid insurance disc and it's clearly displayed. NCT as well. There is a four month extension on NCTs, but make sure that your NCT disc is in date, and again, make sure their car registration registrations match, okay? The NCT, insurance, tax, all should have the matching car registrations. I say that because a good few years ago, I had a fella going for a test, and on the insurance disc, there was actually a mistake on the on the car reg. There was one number missing, and the driving tester wouldn't wouldn't take him out. Correct, I mean, correctly, so I, I never spotted it myself, actually. It was, it was a mistake on my part. I never saw it. since then I'm always conscious of conscious of that. So make sure you have valid tax insurance and NCT discs clearly displayed on your car. You don't need an NCT all it's only for cars four years and older. So the NCT only applies if applicable and you have a an extension potentially on the NCT as well. Next, L plates. You must make sure your L plates are clearly displayed on the front and back of the car. Uh, white background and red L. Okay, you shouldn't, you, you must not cut out the white part. Uh, the whole thing has to be there. Normally, uh, when you're in the car, so if you're in the driver's seat, the, the front L plate should be on the front left and the back one then on, on, the, on the back right as you're standing outside the car. So if you're in the driver's seat, the front L plate should be on the front left. If you're standing at the back of the car, outside of the back of the car, the back L plate should be on the, the back right. Okay, the top, the top right or the lower right, whatever the car for for cars that you know might be overtaking or whatever like that. So L plates must be clearly displayed. Learn a permit, as I as I touched on at the start there. I learn a permit last two years generally. You may get one year extensions then after after the second one. So your third permit could be one year. So whatever your permit, first, second, third permit you have, make sure that uh, your uh, permit is in date that it's valid everything is clearly displayed on it and uh, don't forget it because that's the main thing you need uh, the main id you need with you on on the day is the learner permit okay so make sure you have that on you uh, footwear you are not allowed to wear sandals or flip-flops or any other uh, trendy type of footwear that you might wear uh, beside the swimming pool down in spain okay you have to wear proper runners proper shoes that are comfortable and that encompass the whole of your foot okay so no loose sandals flip-flops anything like that your car must be roadworthy i'm sure this goes without saying but you must not have a bumper hanging off by a tread you must not have broken lights at the back or front you must not have any excessive uh, damage or dents to your car okay it has to look good just because it passes the nct do doesn't necessarily mean everything is perfect with it the nct is just a you know it's just a basic kind of a test for a car but it is reassuring if your car passes the NCT, it is, it is of course a good thing, but it has to be roadworthy, it has to look right, it has to be good, in good shape, you know, um, so, and that's kind of related to the next one there, which is dash lights. You must not have any uh, warning lights on the dashboard before you go out on your test, okay? Now, there are certain um, dash lights that will be fine. For example, if you have a service light on the dash, and that, that service light is just reminding you that your car is due for a service soon in the next few weeks or, or in the next thousand or two thousand kilometers. 
well that's fine okay that that's okay that's just a service like that's just you know telling you that your 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 car is due for service is not telling you that there's anything necessarily wrong with the car so that should be fine okay but if you have an airbag light that your airbag is malfunctioning or, or or the oil light as in you're low on oil or something well you may as well forget about it then because you're not going to be going anywhere uh, in that case so check your dashboard make sure there's no dash lights on that shouldn't be on okay it's very important that your car is roadworthy and there's no no kind of worries in that regard next then up there we have brake and indicator lights so you have to make sure your brake lights are working and your indicators are working as well because at the start of the test the driving tester is going to uh, check from the outside that your brake lights are working and that your front and back indicators are working correctly and in good order okay so make sure that they are okay and um, if your middle brake light is out that's that's going to be fine I've had a few people there in the last year or so where the middle brake light was not working but the two um, brake lights either side were working and the tester said fine that they'll, they'll go out there was no problem there but I always say make sure the three you're better off just making sure all three brake lights are working fine okay tires then you have to make sure your tires are in good nick okay they should be properly inflated there should be no cracks or damage or bulges or air pockets or any of that kind of stuff uh, there should be a good depth as well you know the, the minimum tire tread depth is 1.6 millimeters so make sure your tires are in good order and that there's no warning light on the dashboard either to say you're, you've got low tire pressure or anything like that. Um, it's important that you look after your tires. They're the only part of the car that touches the ground after all. Windscreen. Okay, if there's one or two small cracks, that shouldn't be a problem. But you should have your windscreen free of any major big cracks, okay? You don't want any big cracks in your windscreen. It's not going to look good. There's big cracks on it. It's it, you know, he may not take the, the tester he or she may not take you out. Okay, your windscreen should be nice and clean as well, as well as your 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 passenger and your driver's side side windows, nice and clean, no dust, no grime, so you've got a good view. And make sure you clear off any any rubbish or any furry dice or any of that kind of stuff. You don't want any any of that kind of stuff getting in your way. Uh, you should have nice, clear, clean windscreens. And of course, in the days that we're in now on COVID, your, your car must be nice and clean and tidy. There should be no tissues, no wipes hanging around, uh, no clutter. The less clutter in the car, the better. Um, make sure it's nice and clean um, for the tester and for yourself, of course. Next then we have um, tinted. We have the word tinted there. Your windows must not be overly tinted uh, at the front or the passenger and driver's side windows, okay? They should be just a regular, normal, clear windscreen. Uh, if your car's windows are excessively tinted, you may not be taken out on your test. As I said to you a few moments ago, it should the car should be clean. You should get a bottle of window lean or Mr. Muscle or you know, that, that kind of window cleaner or something. And make sure all your mirrors and windows are, are crystal clear, no dirt, no grime, nice and clean. So you have a better view and the tester has a better view and it's just going to make for a better experience. It's good to give the car clean on the outside and the inside as well. It's always going to look a little bit better if you turn up with a nice clean car as opposed to a, a dirty car. It looks like it's done a few laps around the farm. The passenger door and the passenger seat must be in good working order, as you can see there, passenger door seat. So the tester may want to let down the window because nowadays in, in the COVID world we're living in, uh, ventilation is important. So you have to uh, bear that in mind. The seat adjuster should be able to work uh, regularly and normally. Uh, the passenger door should be able to work fine and the headrest and seatbelt and all that kind of stuff must be working fine for the for the tester, okay? So there are the main things. I'll go through them again, um, maybe in, towards the middle and the end of the stream, but they will be the main things um, in terms of getting yourself ready for the test. So make sure you're, you've got every, everything there in order and you should be fine, okay? Now let's get back to a few comments and now I'm going to go through the test report sheet and I'm going to tell you what the candidate said to me about why the main reason he failed the test. So the last comment we had there was, I think, Dennis Sherry, I think. And then we have Christina Ward. Hi, Dan. Have my driving test today. Any top tips? Well, yeah. where do you start? First of all, good luck with your driving test. Secondly, um, don't drive too slow. Just drive normal because if you have to show the tester confidence, if you show the tester that, that you're a confident driver, well, then he's going to have confidence in you. Um, watch your position. I see a lot on position. Um, 
look behind you on your reverse, I see so many report sheets with, with observation on the reverse around the corner. Um, it's usually down to people not looking behind, people looking the side mirror too much. So when you're reversing around the corner, try to look over both your shoulders. And uh, make sure you check your left mirror as well coming off the roundabouts, especially the bigger roundabouts when you change lanes. I find that's an, another one that pops up an awful lot. Uh, just the left, middle and left mirror as you're exiting the roundabout. So you could be taking the third exit to the right, for example. So just when you pass a second exit, make sure you get your mirrors and indicate them. Even double check the mirrors if you're changing lanes, okay? It's very important. But good luck to you, Christine. Let me know how you get on. Dennis Sherry again saying congratulations. Good man, Dennis. Um, B Lawton then. Let's get back up to B, B Lawton. Hi, then. Passed my test on Monday. Thanks so much for your advice and information. Good stuff, uh, B Lawton. Congratulations on passing. And I'm delighted to guide you in the right direction with these videos and live streams but well done great achievement um so then we have uh tom krishak again who made a, a very kind donation there of 25 euro thank you once again tom and any questions let me know adam crowley is next so adam says hi dan passed my test the other day thanks to you well you know i swear they called me the great dan but really, Adam, it was more down to you. I can guide you in the right direction. I can help with the videos and I can explain certain things. But you're the one that has to go and do it. You're the one that has to turn up. And you're the one that has to deal with the pressure there. And you did it, so well done to you. Congratulations. Two or three more comments and I'm going to get back to the report sheet. Don't forget, if you have any other questions, in the, let me know in the comments section, folks. And if, you've, if you want to have a go at these signs, let me know as well. There's eight signs down there. Let's see who will be the first to, to get them. Okay, so one or two more comments then, and I'm going to get to the sheet here, and I'm going to explain what this guy said to me. Well, I'm going to explain to you what the tester said to this guy about the main reason he failed. Carmel McGowan then. Hi, the Video is very helpful. Question for you. When you're coming off the slip road, uh, going onto the dual carriageway, should you lean forward and do a full shoulder uh, looking or a side look? and a mirror lock mirror looks thank you just a side glance would be grand there caramel so you're coming on to coming off a slip road going on to a dual carriageway uh leaning forward and doing a full shoulder check might not be necessary okay you should be well able to see everything there in your mirrors and by giving a quick sideway glance i have you know i, I don't advise i've never i've never seen it in many documents or any uh, road safety literature to give an excessive full check there because you're going to be taking your eyes off the road too long when you're probably picking up speed so that's not good plenty of mirror checks especially the middle and the right side mirror i'm guessing if you're joining from from the left anyway uh, plenty of middle and, and middle and right mirror checks and a quick sideway glance just before you move out should be fine. I've made a video out there recently on changing lanes, actually. I just I just uploaded a few days ago if you want to check that out. I would also advise you to stay in the in the slip lane as long as possible because that will allow you to build up speed and it will allow you to kind of match the speed of the left lane of the dual carriageway that you're going into. Always start in the left lane. Uh, but plenty of merge checks and a quick shoulder check, a quick sideway glance should be fine there, Carmel, and best of luck to you. Uh, Dennis Sherry again then, so when parking in a car park, my instructor asks me to drop the first gear, uh, clutch down before and come off the clutch a bit and park it on the bite. Yeah, that seems, sounds good enough there, Dennis. I know from being in Wexford here, I would probably do the same because when candidates turn into the test centre in Wexford, they, they, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a rise, like a kind of a bump as, the, as you're going into the driveway as such. And then the test, the car park test center is quite small and tight. So instead of going in second gear and risking the car, you know, chugging and, and, and struggling a bit, I, I say just put the clutch in, go into first gear and use your clutch control. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by the park on the bite now. I'm not sure. Like the bite is something that you get if you're moving off on the hill. But just kind of move, move your clutch up and down slowly and gently and just kind of creep up then as far as you need to. It might be well it will be more controlled that way in a tight area and a tight car park yeah uh, so another comment then before we get to the report sheet hi then uh, this is from melanie butler hi then passed my test on thursday with only one mark Jeez, that's very good uh, so delighted thank you for your videos they help so much congratulations melanie i'm very happy to have played a small part uh, but you did the main work there so give yourself a pat on the back there but congratulations on passing. Anybody that's passed the test, don't forget to let your insurance company know that you passed. 
because you might get some money back on your insurance or at the very least you'll get a reduced rate next year hopefully so don't forget about that let your insurance company know uh, they'll probably seek um, they'll probably seek a, a, a copy of your full license obviously so you know you may send that into them and who knows you might get you might get a reduction okay one more mo one more before i come back to the comments molder x 16 marks in england here it's nine too strict to be honest 85 a bit too pricey yeah i know i know what you mean there molder it's it's different in england though i think they do they not uh encompass grade ones and grade twos like um here in in ireland you, you can get nine marks as a fail but you could still get four or five uh, or six or seven grade ones and it wouldn't uh, count as your overall mark if you know what i mean so uh, they probably balance themselves out because the grade ones don't matter to in ireland they're not going to impact on the overall result of the test whereas in england i think they the equivalent does now I, i'm open to correction on that but uh just bear that in mind the grade ones and and the she here the green ones now this guy on on up here didn't get any grade ones as it happens but you know it's it's worth it's worth it's worth uh, keeping that in mind the 85 euro a bit too pricey yeah i don't know might be a bit cheap to be honest with you if i'm being honest with you on that one you see it used to be 35 euro or, or 38 euro of six or seven years ago but the rate of uh the, the amount of people who just didn't bother showing up because they were happy just to forego 30 or 40 euro whatever it was so when you make it 85 euro um and you also have the you know uh, improved feedback better feedback now than there was years ago most of the testers are have better customer service skills nowadays uh, than they used to and the my road safety uh, portal here seems a great idea so like when you, when you include all that like i i think it's it's good value for money and hopefully people are less likely to not bother turning up when they when they're going to lose 85 euro as opposed to 38 or whatever euro it was but i understand where you're coming from yeah okay so i'll get back to the comments in a second and as i said folks let me know in the comments if you have any questions on driving or the test and if you want to have a go at those signs there on the on the left okay now so i got an email there about a guy from a guy there um obviously his name and location and everything like that will remain confidential um i don't i don't i don't i don't even look where he's from or, or anyway like so it's not important but anybody that sends me in a report sheet and if i look at it here in my live streams uh, needless to say all, all personal information will remain strictly private okay so this person anyway emailed me to ask me to have a look at the sheet and he told me what the tester said now the tester didn't say a whole lot but as you'll see here the tester did explain where the red mark was acquired so if you look down at the middle of the report sheet there uh, this poor chap got a red mistake a grade three mark on reaction anticipating others okay so here's what happened I had a note of it here just so I have the, the full story. Everything was going okay. Uh, the driving tester said to him that you would have passed, actually. You, you, you would have passed test only for this last incident. Because if we count up the blues, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He, there's nine blues, actually. So, well, he would have failed on blues. But um, he was, uh, the tester said he, he, he was a decent driver. But he made one mistake in that he failed to anticipate somebody crossing the road. So, basically, it was towards the end of the test. A uh, construction work worker appeared, um, probably from the left or right, he didn't, he didn't say. Uh, the learner driver, in this case, braked very harshly, braked very suddenly. The tester said he didn't anticipate or plan for the possibility of this happening. And the harsh braking meant it was a really, really abrupt stop and it was dangerous to traffic um, behind. So that's why he failed there, because he didn't anticipate things there. This is why I always say to people, whether it's an email or in the comment section or whatever, don't get hung up on your mirrors. Don't go around uh, in your driving lessons or your driving test checking your mirrors every three or four seconds. It's not necessary, okay? It's far more important to be thinking about what's ahead of you, planning ahead. I've made a video on that. Um, it's it's uh, I think the title is do this and don't fail or so i can't remember what it is but it, it basically is is about planning ahead where i where i pause the video and i have numbers like one two three four about like the yellow box ahead traffic lights ahead all that kind of stuff the mirrors are important like if you're changing lanes if you're overtaking if you're going left or right or if you're exiting around but incredibly important okay but the most important thing is to plan ahead so if you if you're driving along and you see that there's a 
as this guy said, a construction worker, probably wearing a yellow or orange high-vis vest or something like that. So he's going to stand out. You need to be kind of keeping an eye on this guy, okay? The, constru the, the construction worker. Watch his body language. For example, is he walking at a fast, brisk pace? Is he walking slow with his head stuck down on the phone like that, okay? Is he, does he look like he's in a rush? Um, you know, you have to kind of read the body language like that. And the tester said that this guy didn't read the, the, the pedestrian's body language. And as a result of that, he breaks suddenly and it was a, it was a mistake then that cost him dearly. So that's what we have to be aware of there. But let's go down from the top then on this report sheet. So position at roundabouts. Now, I, I didn't get any feedback from the test candidates as to what all the rest of them were. Um, there's not a huge amount of of issues there like they're, they're kind of spread out there's no there's no one area where you could say that it was a real real weakness like but position at roundabouts it, it could be down to like being in the wrong lane or maybe straddling the right lane or the left lane or maybe maybe getting too close to the curb i often find there's one particular mini roundabout um in wexford and when you get up to there, even though it's a small roundabout, when you get up to it, it kind of, um, it kind of, the the where where you the line where you yield at, it, it kind of veers a, a, quite a good bit to the left. And I often find people people stop in a very straight position there, in in instead of instead of keeping left, you know, in, in instead of following the curve. So it, it could be something to do with that. It could be then when you're on the roundabout, say you're going straight on the roundabout, if you just go literally straight. You have to kind of go around in a little bit of a circle, if that makes sense. You, you know, if you're going straight on a smaller roundabout, don't just cut through the middle of the roundabout. Go go around on the on the left side as, as as best you can. I find some people just even when there's two lanes, like they just literally cut through the lanes and they end up going from the left lane, cutting into the right lane, then cutting back to the left lane because they're not going around like that. So I don't know. It it could be any anything. It could be anything like that. It might not even be. Any, it it could be something I haven't even mentioned. But it was something to do with position on roundabouts. Next, we have three marks on observation. Okay, um, so let's have a look at those. Observation at roundabouts, turning right and turning left. So let's deal with roundabouts first. Now, I I find a lot of people have, have what they're known to, is they're not checking the mirrors when they exit the roundabout. Okay, so if you're going straight, or if you're going right, especially, okay, you're going to be spending longer on the roundabout. Okay you're going straight and right especially if you're going right so let's say you're taking the third exit to the right so as i said at the start of the stream if you're taking the third exit to the right you, know, you check your mirrors indicate right you know slow down preview the roundabout don't wait until you're at the line to start looking okay do this maybe 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 15 meters 20 meters before do this see that preview the roundabout don't wait till you get to the line because if you wait till you get to the line you're getting all this information at once and you may struggle to react and get down the gears and all that kind of stuff so you have to spread out the workload okay so get the looks in early and often make sure you keep occasional checks on your mirrors when you're going around the roundabout because you have to show good lane discipline as well um as well as getting the looks in like this beforehand keep the head moving get the one last look and whatever you do, if you're if you're on a bigger roundabout and you're you know you're exiting the roundabout, make sure you get your left mirror, middle and left mirror, uh, as you exit the third exit. So when you're beside the second exit, make sure you get the middle mirror and left mirror and indicate left, and even even just kind of get a quick glance at the right mirror as well to watch for any cars over overtaking you on the on the right side, uh, as well. So you have to check your mirrors when you're exiting the roundabout when you're when you're going straight. Or going third exit to the right, just to make sure that nobody is kind of catching up or on you, or nobody's kind of trying to overtake you or undertake you. So please don't forget that, okay? Observation turning right and turning left. Well, this is usually to do with moving the head. Now it could be a few things. I mean, I don't think it's mirrors because mirrors is marked on under a separate category. Like like there's just a separate category for mirrors. So so. I mean, if I was a tester, I'd mark observation to do with head movement, like moving the head or, or previewing the roundabout or, or, or blind spot. And mirrors is literally checking the mirrors. But anyway, make sure you check your mirrors before you indicate left or right, first of all. If it's a blind junction, don't don't sit back. I I was giving lessons to a fellow yesterday. God love him. He's, he's, you know, he's a decent chap. Like, you know, 
But he's di- he's a big, big, tall, big, tall fella. Big drink of water of a chap, like, you know. And he, we came to a junction. Nicest chap you'd ever meet. We came to a junction. Um, Very blind. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting back to the support you. I, 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 I'm just sharing the story with, about my lesson yesterday because I think it's very important and, and related to this here, okay? So it came to a junction. Uh, school time was 3 o'clock yesterday. There was a heap of cars on, on the left. Loads of parked cars on the left. Uh, very good on the right, actually. Very, very clear on the right. No problem with seeing anything on the right, but couldn't see a thing on the left because cars were parked up on curbs and everything. So I, I was, I, I, as a driving instructor, I try and sit back a little bit like this. You know, I, I, I try and have my seat back because I don't want to be, I don't want to be up this like, like this in, in the car as a driving instructor. I want to give the person, you know, time, sp- like personal space, and so he, so he can see as well. I was waiting there for about ten seconds, and the, the chap. He's about six foot five, six foot six. He'd make a great rugby player, but he kept he kept sitting back in a seat like no, no. He was he wasn't sitting back like he was on a sun lounger, but he was he was just sitting back in a normal position, looking left and right, but not doing anything. So he wasn't creeping out, and he wasn't leaning forward like this to try and get a better view beyond the parked cars. Eventually, I had to say to him. Listen, you're going to have to lean forward and creep out gently here to get a better view. Because otherwise, if you go from this position, you're going from a position of weakness. And if you pull out, yeah, you're okay on the right. But if you pull out and then suddenly a car's come from the left, you're you're screwed. You you could lose a marker on right of way. I said to him, I finished off by saying, listen, just, well, I I, I, I would always pull in somewhere. Say, I, I try not to talk too much when I'm driving. So we, we pulled in and we had a little chat about it. I said, just because you can't see anything doesn't mean there's nothing there. It's very important to remember that, okay? So make sure that you lean forward, you creep out, and you get lots of looks up and down the road like that, including the last look. Uh, Especially turning right, uh, because if you're turning right, you're crossing two lanes, so it's kind of like double the work, okay? So that's that's an observation there. Now let's move on then to, to hazards. So... The, the subheading up there is react, react and anticipate. So that's kind of like what I was saying earlier about you have to plan ahead. You have to think ahead here. It's so important to be aware of what's ahead of you, okay? It's like in life. It's more important to, to think about where you're going in life than where you've come from. And it's the same in driving, okay? So hazards, reaction hazards. I, I, I don't know what that was. It could have been anything. It could have been roadworks. It could have been parked cars. It was probably down to something where he didn't react in time and he probably braked suddenly or he probably had to come out at a bit of an awkward angle, you know, like loop out to the right or something like that. It was probably something to do with that. And it reminds me of the old saying, prevention is better than cure, okay? So it's better to try and prevent these things happening rather than trying to cure an already existing mistake, okay? So it could have been down to a line of parked cars. Maybe there was cars coming up the road that had the, sorry, they had the right of way. Um, it could have been down to poor position that he stopped too close to the parked cars. He might have went into a pothole without avoiding it. He might have went too fast over a speed bump. I don't know. It could have been anything, but it was it was something anyway that it was something that was a problem or uh, some kind of obstruction. I didn't react to. Now anticipate others. I already said what that was, but for those who have just tuned in, I'll I'll say it again. There was a person about to cross the road um, and the learner driver didn't anticipate this person crossing the road um, and the person probably came out on the road and the learner driver had to stop suddenly because he failed to kind of preview the situation. It reminds me of another incident there during the week with someone who was doing a driving lesson with me. Um, we were coming up along a, a road, a reasonably quiet road, but there was a, a speed bump there. Now, the speed bump, it wasn't excessively big. It wasn't excessively small. It was kind of your typical run-of-the-mill speed bump uh, ramp, like, you know. And basically, the person I was giving the lesson to went at the exact same speed before the ramp, on the ramp, and after the ramp. So once we pulled in somewhere quiet, because like I said, I like to pull in somewhere and to have a chat and not to overload the learner with information. So when we pulled in, I, I explained to him, like, uh, you know, you, you have to show, it's, it's not just show the tester, but but, but for your own sake, because good driving is for life, not, not just for a driving test. You have to show the tester that you're aware of the ramp is there, that, that you're reacting to the ramp. And that means going about 10 or 20% slower for the ramp than you would before or after the ramp. At least that way you're showing that you're changing your driving habits 
to uh, suit the traffic conditions or to suit the road conditions okay so normally you would you could be in third gear going along 35 kilometers 30 kilometers whatever so if you see a ramp maybe just slow down drop down to 20 25 kilometers second gear you know and, and then build up speed after the ramp but at least acknowledge show the test that you're acknowledging the ramp is there and adjust your driving and adjust your speed downwards to reflect the changing circumstances okay so you have to remember that in relation to ramps or hazards or potholes or parked cars okay signals then so the one question this guy asked me in the email was what on earth is signal stopping what could that be uh, he wasn't sure usually in my experience this is parking okay so it's probably down to uh, the person either not indicating to park or indicating to park but letting it go off too early or maybe even leaving it on too long i'm, I'm not sure actually he, he didn't say the tester didn't say it, like but if you see signal stopping it's usually to do something to do with parking the car up that you didn't indicate properly or you let it go off too early or something like that now i i it, it could possibly as well be down to a sudden braking as well but i i, I guess he's uh i suppose he, he he included that up there under anticipate others so i'd be surprised if the tester uh also included under signal stopping because if you if you break so just just to clarify that if you break suddenly and without warning or very little warning excuse me it doesn't give a great signal to the car behind you because your brake lights don't have a chance to come on to warn the car behind you so pardon me it could be something to do with that as well so sudden braking means you know you're not, the person behind you is not as aware that you're stopping suddenly but usually it's, it's down to not indicating property when you're parking usually anyway and then signals turning left as well so um the signals turning left could have been down to i mean the, the indicator might not have i mean he might have forgot to indicate turning left it might have switched off too early something like that who knows uh something there but again it's only one uh on turning left so it's not no big deal but just you want to keep an eye on the signal stopping though because you got two there obviously so it's it's worth keeping an eye on and then finally we have um signal or sorry reverse and observation there so i see this a lot a lot on the reverse i probably see more mistakes on the reverse for observation as opposed to anything else like competency ability to do it or, or uh, right of way in simple language you have to look behind you on the reverse you can't spend the majority of your time looking in the left or middle mirror because your car has too many blind spots and if you constantly look in the mirror um it's not going to be good you could easily miss something on your right over your right or left shoulder if you if you constantly look in your mirror you're, you're only seeing about 25 30 percent of what you need to see um you have to be aware of what's behind you because there could be a car coming there could be a cyclist the cyclist will be very hard to see because they're, because they're so small pedestrians the same um especially when you're when you're turning around the on, on the corner like you know there there's there's a huge huge blind spots then so i often say to people think of the five point check five points when you're reversing okay you have your left shoulder your left side mirror middle mirror right mirror and then the the other shoulder that's five points and if you keep alternating those points you're going to be okay on observation and and as, as you're looking around you're kind of looking out the front as well so you're you're kind of getting you know you, you can call it six points if you want because you're 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 seeing what's out in front as well so on the reverse around the corner try not to look in the mirrors too much try look behind you more over both shoulders take it slow as well you know the slower you go the better but yeah the main reason here was uh the test said to him at the end that you're not a bad driver you, you did well overall that you probably would have got it only for the the thing there so may, maybe he did give him one for anticipation and then one for signal stopping because that would make sense that that means he would have had eight marks before that and the extra one then would have been the ninth one so i i i'm only guessing that. i'm only making an educated guess i don't know because but it's curious that the tester said that yeah he would have been okay only for that so maybe, maybe the sudden breaking meant uh, was down a signal stopping as well so my advice to this guy if he's listening i i, I emailed him anyway last night is you seem to be a, you seem to be a fairly capable driver you made one mistake though by failing to anticipate so apply quickly again for the test and hopefully you can learn from the experience and put this experience to good use the next time okay 
Okay then folks, let's get back to some comments here and let's see, is anybody going to make a go at these signs? If not, I'll just tell you what they are anyway, okay? So let's see then, where where did I finish up? Um, I said, Dennis, I'd said, did I get to Melanie Butler? Um, let me see. Mel, I'll, I'll, yeah, I said Mulder X about the English test. Uh, Rami, Bust, Rami Bustami, is it? I don't think I don't think I remember that. Rami Bustami. Hi, Dane. My test is on the 31st of December. My instructor told me I need to answer the tell me questions and signs, as the book says, or I will lose marks for not perfect answers. That is a load of rubbish. Once you can explain to the tester that you have the, the right idea, that you understand the rules and what well, the rules and regulations of whatever question he asks you, you'll be grand, you'll be fine, okay? Unless you get some tester who has a, a chip on the shoulder and wants you to answer in perfect Shakespearean English, you're going to be fine, okay? Um, some testers but may be more strict on wording, others won't. The vast majority won't be, I can assure you that, okay? I can't speak for every tester, I can't speak for every test centre, okay? But once you get the, the idea across of what you want, like the signs down there, what like you know, just once you get the message across, you'll be fine, okay? Um I don't think it's a good idea to be filling people with that kind of nonsense, to be honest with you. Because that that people who's I, I'd have a lot of I'd have given lessons to a lot of people who are English wouldn't be their first language. And they don't need the added stress of listening to that kind of crap, you know. If English is not your first language, you, you've enough to be dealing with. You know, you've you you you're you're kind of doing a driving test in 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 a in another country, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, just get the message across and do your best. Okay, if you get a few wrong, you get a few wrong. Just move on. Don't dwell on it. Okay, and the best of luck to you, Rami. If any more questions, let me know. Um, Lynchy then says, uh, Rami, if you got them all wrong, the most you can get is one exactly is one grade two. So Lynchy clears that up there very well. Even if you get every question, every road sign wrong, the most you can get is one grade two mark. Okay, just answer them in your own words as best you can. You don't need to be adding extra stress on yourself. Uh, do your best, to answer them in your way, and once you get the message across, you'll be fine. Wayne Griffin. Hi Dan Wayne here. My learner license is extended to the new year. Would you recommend renewing it now? I probably would, Wayne Mail Flower. Um like if you have a test date coming up, maybe not, but it it depends on your it depends on your test date. But I would certainly be encouraging you to renew that unless you have a test date coming up because there could be a bit of a waiting list or you might have to wait to get into C D N D L S people. So that would be my advice. But uh you know, you have to make that decision for yourself. Uh based on your circumstances, but I would think so, yeah. Rami Bustami, I know, but he need me to answer it like what the book says, not forget or adding word. Rami, as I said to you, whoever's telling you that is trying to put you under excess pressure and he's talking absolute rubbish. Uh, as I said, do your best, answer them in your own way. Um, Lynchy, no, I'm pretty sure it's not exact. So Lynchy said, it's not exact to what it says in the book, absolutely not. Look at his keywords, yeah. As if a stop sign that you say stop sign as yeah exactly your keywords are important like Lynchy says there. Um, Tom Krishiak then. No need to quote word. Yes, Tom speaking sense as well. No need to quote word for word. All you need to show is familiarity of road signs exactly. Doesn't have to be coherent on target. So 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 don't make up your own. Yeah, don't you know don't don't be you know don't don't tell stories or anything like that. But yeah, that you just have to say it in your own words. Trying to pass my theory test, Stacy Williamson. Best of luck to you, Stacy. If you're doing that, I would recommend practicing the theory tests online. You can get a CD, kind of as like a CD ROM, um, and you can put that into your uh, computer and do practice mock theory tests. That's a great way to prepare for it, as well as reading the rules of the road book as well. And I have lots of theory and road signs videos here as well. Uh, I can send them to you if you want. Um, James Rowland then. Hi then, do you indicate if you're overtaking a parked car, even if you don't cross the opposite um, lane? No, you don't have to indicate then. Um, it wouldn't be essential. 
uh, I would probably give a quick indicator if you're straddling or or nearly crossing the white the line or the opposite line. In this case, James, it's, it's kind of like what I was saying earlier. It's not about the indicator. You know, the, the indicator is not the be all and end all. In these type of situations, just look at look at this report sheet here. Where where did the guy get the red mark? It's under anticipating others and reacting and then reaction to hazards. So it's about planning ahead, thinking ahead. So if you're overtaking a park car, it's not important if you indicate and uh, if you don't cross the line. There's no, no need to worry. Don't worry about that. You don't have to do it then. But think of these things here. Like check your mirrors before you move out. Make sure nobody's overtaking you at the same time. Move out early and gradually. Be aware of oncoming cars. Don't take anybody else's right of way. And make sure you come in nice and gradually as well with a quick uh, left mirror check. Things like that. Plan ahead is more important than worrying about the indicators. Uh, Stacy Williamson, any way I can get help? Well, yeah, you can watch. I said to you there, Stacy, you can watch my videos on the uh, on the theory and road signs. I've I've covered lots of the main topics there. You can. I would strongly recommend though you do practice theory tests on the with the CD ROM or with the. I don't. Know, I'm not sure if you can do it online or not. I I I. I my computer doesn't even have a, a CD. I, 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 the whole DVD disc things are are, are are very old technology now. But on older computers, you'd be able to do that anyway. So yeah, the more practice you get, the better. And you know, keep reading the rules of the rule book, uh, and that will get you on the right track. Chloe Thornton, what's your opinion on failing on progress? Uh, from Chloe Thornton. Yes, I see that a lot, Chloe. Uh, a lot, a lot. You have to. You have to have confidence. You have to show the tester that you're confident and you're decisive. And therefore, the tester will have confidence in you and is more likely to not mark you on this area. If it's a good open straight road, give us some juice, get up to the speed limit and exceed the speed limit by one or two kilometers. If it's safe to go, just go. But try and judge the other car like are they on a hill? Like if you're pulling out of a turn, ask yourself, are you taking off on a hill? Are they coming down a hill? Are they picking up speed? Are they slowing down? But you have to make you have to be decisive. If you feel that it would be safe to go, if you were in the car with your loved ones, then it's going to be safe to go for the tester as well, more often than not. Okay. But it's very important that you show good progress, that you don't drive too slow, because believe me when I say this, there is nothing in this world that annoys a tester more than people driving too slow. Sometimes it's an insecurity. It's, it's, it's the people that drive too slow in the driving test are the same people that go too fast in real life. And the reason they're going so slow is because they have this um, insecurity about it. But if you drive too slow in the test, you probably will fail. If I, if, I had a, if I was a driving tester and I had an inkling that a candidate was pretending to drive slower than they do in real life, I swear to God I would have that guy failed, uh, or girl, failed inside five minutes, no questions asked. I would just fail them right there and then. Uh, so show confidence, show good progress. If it's safe to go, just go. And if it's not safe, then hold back. Let's see what else we have here. Lynchy then, can you give an example of how you would get a grade three for anticipating others? Um, well, I thought I just did here in the in this thing. I mean, I'll I'll give you one. I'll I'll, I'll just this first. If you see someone cross, if you see somebody walking fast, for example, and they have their head in the phone and they're walking fast, like about to cross the road, and then they suddenly cross the road, but they see you late and you see them late and you end up stopping suddenly, that's that's failure to anticipate others. If you're driving along and you have a pedestrian and they're walking a dog on a long leash, and then there's another dog on the opposite side of the road. The dog on your side of the road with a long leash suddenly tries to get to that dog on the other side of the road. Um, because, you know, that that's what dogs do. They wouldn't be the smartest cookies in the lunchbox. And sometimes they will do that. And they're not going to be aware of cars. And the car or the dog kind of, you know, makes a move across the road. And you have to swerve or brake because you didn't anticipate the dog on the long leash. For example, another example, if you see a cyclist and the cyclist is looking over his shoulder like this. That's, you know, and you overtake him when he's trying to take a right turn, maybe. You know, that, that would be a failure to anticipate. If you're coming behind a bus and the bus has stopped momentarily and then the bus has his right indicator on, but even though the bus has his right indicator on, you still decide to overtake him. 
that is a very poor antis that's very poor anticipation then if you see a bus with his right indicator on you should just hold back and let him overtake you don't rush to overtake him let the situation develop so there are some examples of failing to anticipate others you know dri driving too fast when there's a load of potholes T the, it, it could be there's a load of them like you know just there's, there's so many there okay then fine. nobody's had a go at the signs yet okay so let's, let's I, let me see if anyone have a go at them i'm gonna go out to the rest of the comments here I don't think anybody's going to have a go at the signs today. I think it's the first time ever no one's had a go at the signs in the live streams. But um, number one is roadworks. Number two, traffic crossover to the right. Number three, traffic crossover to the left. Number four and five are different now to two and three. They're very similar, but they're different. Number four is move to the left one lane. So so the, the road changes direction up ahead and you have to be aware of that and move according to the roadworks. So four is move to the left one lane. Number five, move to the left. Sorry, number five, move to the right one lane. Number six then, and number seven is move to the left and right, but two lanes up ahead, okay? So number six, move to the left, two lanes up ahead. Move to the left, move to the right, sorry, is number seven, two lanes. And number eight then, the roads divide at the island or the obstruction, okay? They're all roadwork signs um, because they're the orange color. Okay then, folks. Uh, let's see. Let's get try get the rest of the comments done then. Um, before we get on the home straight here. Um, let's see then. Um, where 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 did I where where, where did I finish there? Um, I think Lynchy was there, wasn't it? I'm just trying to find my con Yeah, here we go. I think. So Digi, Digi Vex is it? Okay, Digi Vex. Let's see what Digi Vex says. Um, hi then. Is if. If there is a car in front of you, completely stopped, not parked, would you indicate into the left-hand lane and indicate back into the right-hand lane, or would you just go around the car? If there was a car in front of you, completely stopped, not parked, would you indicate into the left lane and indicate back to the right lane, or would you just go around the car? I'm not quite sure what you mean there. Um, I would, I think what you mean, there's, there's a car stopped in front of you. Um, I would be, I would say instead of, instead of undertaking him on the left, I would imagine you'd be better off just going around him on the right. I would say there, if that's what you mean. Um, because it, it depends on the situation though. I mean, if he, if he's too much to the right, you might have to go around to the left, but if possible, just, just, I think the last one you said there, just, just go around them would, would be the best one there. Yeah um and then you ask then is it okay to indicate to a bus lane if you're overtaking a parked vehicle um you you, you might have to on certain occasions because if, if if it's a hazard it's a hazard but usually the bus lane wouldn't be on the left wouldn't it so you're asking a slightly unusual no wait you're, you're asking a slightly unusual question there if there's a parked car on the right would you overtake? I mean, the, I know the bus lane could be on either side. You could have contra flow bus lanes as well, I suppose. But if you have to indicate and go into the bus lane to, to overtake a parked vehicle, uh, well, then, yeah, that's what you have to do. Because unless the alternative is to stay behind the parked vehicle indefinitely, that's what you're going to have to do, yeah. It's like it's like crossing a continuous white line or the hatch lines. Sometimes you just kind of have to overtake and cross the lines um, to take account of the situation. Matthew Syriac or Kyriac, or I'm saying that. I renewed my permit on the 30th of November. Expiry date um, is also the same, but my road safety portal says it's expired. Yeah, it sounds like it. That doesn't make any sense. So let me just see now. You renewed your learner permit on the 30th of November. Okay, so if you renewed your learner permit, you should have got a you should have got a one year or two year extension. Expiry date is also the same. No idea what, what this is, but my road safety portal says it, it's expired. Uh, I don't know. I think you need to get in touch with the RSA about that or the NDLS, maybe maybe ring the NDLS center because uh, I, I can't answer that. It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, if you renewed your permit, surely you got a one year or a two year extension. Uh, I don't know how it, I, I don't know how it could be out of date if you just renewed it on the 30th of November. It doesn't make any sense. You need to you need to look into that. Sunset, do you need to bring your logbook? No, you don't need to bring your logbook. No, 
Not if you're doing a driving test for category B, which is cars. No, you don't. Just bring your learner permit. That's all you need, your learner permit. And make sure to have your phone at hand as well because they will ring you probably before um, the test while you're in the car park just to, um, you know, j just to confirm that it's you and to bring you into the test centre. So have your phone at hand and uh, make sure you have your learner permit, but you do not need your logbook. Um, NK Nyoma, hi Dane, hello to you too. Dennis Sherry, hello, or yesterday I was driving and noticed a woman looking at her phone on a footpath. I slowed down a bit and watched her to see if she'd make a move. In the end she didn't and I had a look back in the centre mirror and she still hadn't moved. Move. Well, it looks like you did the right thing there, Dennis, and that's what I mean by anticipating others in the right way. So you notice that she was on her phone because sometimes people go into a zone and they, they go into a trance and and things like that and you know they're they're not they're not all with us sometimes they they, they can be uh you know distracted uh with phones and earphones and listening to music and that kind of thing so by slowing down and watching her body language looks like looks like he did the right thing looks like you were anticipating others there very well Alua Adi Muiva Iwa. Thanks for all your helpful videos, Dane. My pleasure. God bless you and all yours in Jesus' mighty name. Well, I don't actually believe in God. I'm actually an atheist, but I appreciate the sentiments anyway, Alua. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, email me. Um, and best wishes to you. Rosie, my boot. Test really soon. Best advice, please. Well, Rosie, uh, get lessons. Get proper driving lessons. I mean, I, I hope my videos will help you. I'm sure they will. But, you know, you should still get driving lessons yourself to cover the local areas in wherever your test is, wherever the test centre is. Uh, don't drive too slow. Keep the head moving at junctions and roundabouts. Watch your position. Know your theory and road signs, but don't stress about the theory and road signs because it's only a small part of the overall test. And I would advise you to get uh, a driving lesson the hour before your test as well, because that can kind of get you off on the right track and it can kind of set you up in the right way. So good luck to you. Um, sunset. Do you signal before a turnabout? The answer to that question is yes. You signal just before the start, but you do not have to signal at any other time on the turnabout. But yes, do at the start. Emma765. Do you recommend telling the tester everything you're doing and why? <laughs> and also, what you see, for example, I can see a building site, so I'm aware a builder or truck could come out. Well, that's an interesting question, Emma765. Uh, no, don't tell the tester what you're doing, everything you're doing and why. There's no need for that. The tester will know by your driving style what you're doing and how you're reacting. And what you see, like, you, 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 you've got the right idea, like you, you're, you're thinking in a good way there. If you check out my videos on commentary drive, you'll see me doing that, talking out loud. But while you, you could do it occasionally to yourself uh, if you want, if it makes you feel better. There's nothing wrong with it, by the way. Let me just rephrase. There's nothing wrong with talking to yourself um, in the test because it is a good way to help you focus and help you concentrate. So by all means, there, there's nothing against that. But you don't have to do it uh to let the tester know. The tester will know by observing your driving. But you have the right idea. If you can do it silent, silently to yourself, it's probably better. Um, and it might be slightly less stressful. So in your own head, like just, just silently in your head, think that there's a yellow box up ahead or there's a speed bump up ahead or there's parked cars there or I have to turn off soon or something like that. But you definitely have the right idea by planning ahead and thinking ahead all right, yeah. Uh, next comment then, Adam Mix. McPeak is it? Have my test on Wednesday. Any advice? Not well. Just what I've said to everybody else, Adam. Get professional lessons. Get a lesson the hour before the test. Don't drive too slow. Keep the head moving at roundabouts. Uh, lots of looks. Um, don't forget your mirrors as you exit the roundabout. Look behind on the reverse around the corner. It's hard for me to give you advice. I don't know what your weaknesses are. I don't know what you're worried about. I don't know what you're stressed about. My email is there in the yellow writing, daintai at gmail.com. If you want to email me, if you have any concerns, let me know. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it, everybody's different. Like, Ireland for the Irish. That's an interesting name. Um, Irish people come in all different shades and colours, so I'm not sure about that, about that anyway. Uh, shovels ahead. Yeah, that's one, one for number one anyway, so we'll, we'll give you that one. 
Um, let's see, where are we? James Rowland, Roadworks ahead. Oh, James, the first man to have a go at the, the road sign. So let's see how he, how he got on. One, uh, Roadworks ahead, yes. Traffic crosses to the right of the centre divide, absolutely. And the same at number three, yeah. Move right, move left, boat lanes move left, boat lanes move right, start of road divider. Good man, James, that is very good, all correct. So you notice there the way James didn't say it exactly as it was said in the rules of the road book, but he still got the message across. So that nonsense that your man was told earlier on that you have to say it word for word, complete rubbish. James Rowland there just answered him in a perfectly articulate and succinct way, and he got the message across, okay? So that's good. Ivan F. Hi then. How long before a learner permit expires do you have to renew it? Or is it just as long as it's before it's out of date? Um, normally five years. So if you have a learner permit and it goes out of date in 2020, if you leave that till 2025 before you renew it, you'll then have to go back to the very start and do your 12 lessons all over again, start fresh. But the best thing is to, is to do a driving test and pass a driving test so you don't have to worry about that. Um, you know, try renew it at, before it goes out of date. Like, you don't, you can renew it three months before it goes out of date. You don't have to wait till, the out, till it's out of date, uh, the week it's out of date. You can do it three months in advance. So try not to let these things, um, you know, uh, fester, if you know what I mean. Uh, so five years, yeah, and if it's full license, is 10 years. So if you have a full license and it goes out of date by 10 years, you're going to have to go right back to the very start then and do it all again. But if you do it before the 10 years, you, 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 you'll be fine. Okay, folks, so we're kind of getting on the home straight. I'm going to get, going to get a sum, I'm going to summarize everything soon on the checklist here, the road signs and this guy's test sheet. So I'm going to try and summarize at the end. So I'm going to try and catch up my comments here. And we'll kind of bring things to a close soon. Still, if you have any questions, let me know. And if I if I sign off bef before I answer your question, email me daintai at gmail.com. Um, okay, so let's try and catch up on some comments. Um, IOBK, I've done my 12 lessons, have no adult to accompany me on practice drives. Uh, I have L plates. Do I need, I have L plate, my L plate, but under the rules, no, no, I need, do I need, I think, to be accompanied. Or can they take the car? Yes, if you're a learner permit holder, you need to be accompanied by a full license driver. And that full license driver has to have his full license for two years or more. Um, you can't drive unaccompanied. You are risking a fine, penalty points, and you are risking your car getting taken off you. So yeah, you need to be very careful there. Rules are rules. Should I continue practicing by myself and take the risk? Or what? I would not. I would never suggest practicing by yourself and take the risk. No, I would suggest getting lessons. If you can't find an accompanying adult, then you have to get driving lessons, okay? It's very, very simple. You can't drive unaccompanied. You're going to risk prosecution and your car being impounded. So be very careful there. You do not. It's illegal to drive by yourself as a learner permit holder. Don't do it for your own sake. Prasanna Raju, hi Dan, whether there's any change whether there's any change with testing procedure due to COVID, I heard that the tests are reducing this time in the car. Um, like they are getting out of the car during the reverse around the corner. That's correct, yeah, that's correct. Uh, speaking to a few testers in Wexford, I think they stay in the car during the reverse around the corner. Um, but uh, driving testers are spending less time in the car. For example, when they're asking your technical checks in the car, like the ask you about the hazard lights or the wipers and the lights, they'll do that from outside the car if possible. And very often on the reverse around the corner, they'll actually step outside the car and uh, watch you do the reverse around the corner from from the outside uh, so as to avoid being close to you as you're looking uh, behind you. Now, I, I, I'm not sure if there's any point in doing that, but that's, that's what they do anyway uh, from time to time. So yes... That's correct. They do lessen their time in the car, but the driving test is still the same test. I mean, the driving test is still the, the same length of time, 35, 40 minutes as it always was. That that hasn't changed. But yeah, like I said, there are some differences like face masks, hand washing, sanitizing the permit, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Irish Tits McGee, do you look predominantly over your left shoulder while also checking the other mirrors and glancing over your right when you begin to turn for the rush around the corner. Yes, that sounds like a good plan. You can look in your mirrors rushing around the corner, but you have to look over your left shoulder the majority of the time, as well as the right shoulder occasionally as well. 
uh, you basically have to get all round checks pretty much the same way as you described in your comment there. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wojciech Vrobel, one person in the chat complained about the high cost of driving tests in Ireland. I tried to compare it with other EU countries, but it's difficult to find. Yeah, it'd be interesting to find, but as I said, the, the main reason it, it, the, the test went up to 85 euro is to try and stop people cancelling um, or not bothering to turn up. Um, because the people generally didn't seem to mind losing 38 euro uh, and not bother turning up and just reapply but when you kind of have 85 euro going down the drain they might not be as likely to um, not bother turning up if you know what I mean Dylan Ryan four grade twos and that's all thanks for your help I presume you passed then Dylan great stuff for you congratulations well done Rami Bustami, is that essential to go to the test center or company with someone who, who, who will hold a full driving license? Yes, that would be the ideal scenario there, Rami, yeah. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, they're not going to ask you about that. They're, they're not going to... Um, they're not going to... Um, ask you, did you arrive with a full license driver or not? Um, but you should always have a full license driver with you as a learner permit holder. Uh, my instructor told me I'm not supposed to use the handbrake while doing a turnabout maneuver. That's completely incorrect. Uh, the the correct answer is it depends on the on the maneuver. You do not need to turn. You, you do not need the handbrake on the turnabout all the time. So if it's if it's a very 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 flat road, uh, the handbrake is not necessary. Okay, but I would strongly recommend the handbrake on the turnabout if you're on a hill and you don't want to roll back or roll forward. You could potentially do it with in an automatic car without any handbrake, yeah, fair enough. And you could potentially balance the car with the accelerator and the clutch to avoid roll forward and roll back. But that's always very, very risky because you're putting more work on yourself. It'd be much better to use the handbrake if you're going to roll back or if you're going to roll forward when you're reversing. Um, so let's see then. Let's try and get the rest of the comments sorted here then. Um... Lynchy, uh, Lynchy says he was doing a turnabout and he used my handbrake due to the verge on the road. He said it was fine. Yes, that just confirms what I was saying there from Lynchy. Son said, if there's a parked car before a junction and you intend to go straight, do you, sig do you still signal right? You can, yes, but just keep it very, very brief. Very, very quick signal to the right. There's no need for that signal to the right if you're not moving out very much. Uh, so it, it depends on how you move out. Uh, so don't bother signaling if you're only moving out a tiny bit. But if you're moving out a good bit, a quick signal, but then make sure it's not on too long. If there's two lanes and you notice you're on the left lane to go straight, but that lane is left turn only and you're near the end of the junction, where do you go? Um, so Sunset asks, if there's two lanes and you notice you're on the left lane to go straight, but that lane is left turn only and you're near the end of the... How can it be left turn only if you're in the left lane to go straight? If there's two lanes and you notice you're on the left lane to go straight, but that lane is left turn only and you're near the end of the jump. Well, you need to change lanes to the right lane then. I mean, what 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 do you, 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 you ask me, what do you do? But I, like I ask you, what, what are you wanting to do? If you want to turn, if you want to turn left, stay in the left lane and continue on left. If you need to get into the other lane, well, Watch my video I made a few days ago on changing lanes. Check the mirrors, indicate, move across, and go into the right lane then. Make sure you show good observation changing lanes. So you have to watch your sunset. In that situation, you have to watch your signs, and you have to watch your road markings, because your position is going to be dependent on the signs and markings. So pay close attention to that. Dennis Sherry, a few weeks ago, I was stopped in traffic with a red light behind four cars. I stayed behind and didn't go on the yellow box junction at the bus station. The car behind beeped, but I stayed back. Sounds to me like you did the right thing there, Dennis. Uh, every situation is different, like. But if you had went up there, and you had got stranded, you would have been stuck in a yellow box. Then, if if you were said it was a yellow box, yeah. So it sounds to me like you did the right thing, Dennis. It's hard for me to comment too much because I I don't know the junction, but uh, it sounds to me like you did the appropriate thing there. And fair play to you for not bowing into the bowing down to the beeping car behind you. We need more people like Dennis Sherry in this world, folks. I think. Uh, Stark, FJ Stark Wolf. Hi, then. I have my driving test coming soon. I've chosen to go automatic. What is your advice on 
what is your advice on those who choose automatic cars my advice is congratulations do what you feel is best uh, i don't really have a strong opinion automatic cars are great that's the way the future of driving is going anyway we're all going to be driving automatic cars soon and if you feel better there well then good for you and good luck to you uh, i'm sure you'll do fine they're easier to drive so uh, best wishes to you Gushy, gushy, something or other. I then greetings from Kildare, ah, Kildara, the 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 lily home of the lily whites. I have my test on Wednesday. Very nervous about the automatic. I'm getting conflicting advice. If it's a grade two or grade three, if you hit the curb at any stage, there should be no conflicting advice. And I'm I'm going to explain to you very simply, okay? If you hit the curb, and you just it's just a gentle clip, or you brush it gently, or you slightly scrape it, it's probably going to be a grade one or a grade two. If you hit the curb hard and you mount it, it's probably going to be a grade three. Okay, it's like there's no simple answer, like because everything is different. No, nobody, no two people are going to hit the curb in the same way. So it just depends on how you hit the curb. If and hopefully you won't hit the curb. Don't like don't. This who is this person again? Go, is, is it? I I don't know your name. You have a, you have a weird name there. But wh whatever your name is, do, don't be thinking like like if I hit the curb or grade two, grade three. You're 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 getting into very negative thoughts there. Okay, you have to think about all the good things that you do in driving. I'm sure you're a good decent driver. So let 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 your memories of driving be the good things that you do, not not the bad things that might not might never happen. You know. Okay, folks, so I'm going to be finishing up now very, very soon. Let's see if I can catch up on the last few comments, and I'll have my summary, and then we'll call it a day. Um, Lynchy says, yeah, unfortunately, that happens. Uh, some people are impatient. Yeah, Ivan F, on a roundabout, if you're turning after 12 position, when is it advisable to move into the left lane to turn off the roundabout after you signaled? After Well, not just when you're level with the last exit before your one there, Ivan F. So if you're taking the any exit after 12 o'clock you'd normally check your mirrors indicate left and then begin to gradually go across when you're level with the exit before the one you're taking okay um irish tits mcgee cheers then you're very welcome uh irish tits mcgee great name by the way dennis sherry i said this to my instructor after and she said i was right not to go to on the box good we're speaking off the same hymn sheet there she said they may have been trying to intimidate me as a learner possibly so i was driving straight ahead it sounds to me like you did the right thing there, Dennis Sherry. And if your instructor says it, who sh he or she will be more, she sorry will be more familiar with that junction. It sounds like you did absolutely the right thing, and I'm sure it sounds like you're a good driver and a decisive person, which is what we need. Good decisive drivers, not too fast, not too slow. Uh, I O B K, thanks. You're very welcome. I O perpendicularly only. Hi Dan, I passed my driving test last Tuesday. Videos helped a lot. Big thanks. Keep watching. Thanks for your work. Perpend particularly only well, if i'm saying that correct great name you're very very welcome congratulations on passing well done to you and i'm glad that i played a part in your success but congratulations uh prasanna says thanks dennis sherry thanks and lynchy great yeah very welcome folks uh last couple of comments gazer uh what's that gaz gazer wins hg I have my second lesson today the thing that is getting me is passing park cars i get nervous i'm going to hit the, hit the many tips move out early and gradually watch out for oncoming cars more so than anything behind you and practice and get lessons things that seem difficult and tricky now will not be difficult and tricky four or five or six lessons into the future okay practice makes perfect good luck to you what are the great combinations which result in a fail and where can i find it well, I'm sure you'll find it online. Um, if you if you Google, uh, what is it? Driving test standards Ireland or driving test failure standards are or something like that. But if you get one grade three, it's a fail. If you get four grade twos of the same mark, like if you see there, um, on on top there, if if you got four on position at roundabouts, four blues, that's a fail. If you get six under a heading like position, observation, or reaction to hazards, if you get six grade twos under the one heading, it's a fail. Or if you get nine grade twos overall, it's a fail uh, as well. So it depends. Most people, if they fail, get a grade three like this guy, or they get nine or more grade twos. Um, let's see, where are we? Um, last couple of comments, folks. Um sunset says thanks you're very welcome gushi as well says thanks very welcome and gazer wins hd appreciate very all very welcome folks and thanks very much for tuning in so 
Just to summarize then before I go, the checklist there, tax insurance NCT discs. Make sure you have them, make sure they're valid and in date. You must have L plates front and back. Your learner permit must be valid and in date. You can check extension if you want on the NDLS website. Um, wear comfortable shoes, you're not allowed to wear flip-flops or sandals. Your car must be roadworthy, in good shape, inside and out. No dash lights should be on. Uh, some dash lights may not allow you to do your driving test. Make sure your brake lights and indicator lights are working perfectly. Tires should be in good shape. No uh, scrapes, scratches, should be good depth, uh, should be properly inflated. Your windscreen should be clear of any clutter, nice and clean, and shouldn't have any excessive cracks. The small little crack is, will not be a problem. The windscreen should not be overly tinted, okay? The car overall should be nice and clean inside and out. Your passenger door seat should be in good working order. The window should be able to work fine, as well as the seat and the seat adjuster. The road signs. Uh, sorry, one more comment here. Terence Chan, very welcome tennis, uh, or Terence says he loves me, great, very nervous driver, but your videos help me relax prior to driving, but glad to help you Terence, um, my email is there if you want, if you have any questions, uh, thanks for tuning in. The signs, number one, road works, number two, uh, one lane crossover to the right, number three, one lane crossover to the left, number four, uh, turn, road, road, turn to the left, road, one lane, what am I trying to say here? Number four, traffic moves to the left, one lane up ahead. Number five, traffic moves to the right, one lane up ahead. Number six, traffic, two lanes of traffic moves to the left up ahead. Number seven, two, lane, two lanes of traffic move to the right up ahead. And number eight, the road divides, uh, two lanes divide at the island. My email is there, dantai at gmail.com, rsa.ie, www.rsa.ie is the uh, website for the road safety authority where you can find out everything about the driving test and licenses and all that kind of stuff there www.myroadsafety.ie is where you apply for your test and you can track your progress and check disqualifications and manage your your learning to drive experience there and hopefully in the future you'll be able to pick your date for the driving test so that's a, a great new portal myroadsafety.ie remember folks very important don't use any third party sites to apply for your driving test. If you're going to apply for your driving test, use rsa.ie and they will link you into www.myroadsafety.ie. There are quite a few third party sites out there that are charging you extra money to apply for the test and they're just ripping you off, okay? Make sure if you're going to apply for your test, it's, the, it's from the websites I have on screen there, okay? And have we got another comment there? Per Perpetua says thanks. You're very welcome, Perpetua. Thank you very much. Finally, then, just to, just the 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 reason this person failed, as you can see, uh, he didn't anticipate the red one there. He didn't anticipate a pedestrian crossing. Position at roundabouts, maybe slightly out of position. Observation, probably down to not moving the head enough. Maybe didn't check the mirrors coming off the roundabouts. Maybe didn't creep out, but basically didn't look enough. Hazards could be anything. Park cars, uh, maybe braking suddenly, not reacting to obstructions up ahead. Signals usually means indicators. Maybe the indicator went off early, turning left. Uh, stopping is usually down to not indicating properly when you're parking. And reversing then didn't look behind enough on the reverse around the corner. Girish Kotari, thank you. Very welcome, Girish. So um, that brings us to the end of this live stream, folks. I want to say a big thank you to everybody who tuned in and for all your comments. Um, thanks for being with me on Saturday. I hope to be back next Saturday, maybe at a later time next Saturday. I'll, I'll let you know on my YouTube uh, channel anyway, on the community section, I'll let you know there. So uh, best wishes to you all, uh, anyone who learned to drive, anybody doing a test, best of luck to you. I'm here to help you. If you want my help, just email me or comment on any of my YouTube videos. I try to respond to all comments and all emails. So thanks for being with me and I'll see you soon. Stay safe.